The deputy post going out the shop. <laughs> Wait, tell me where to start. Should I should just like go? Just... Yeah, just go. Just start doing uh, your thing. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah, give me some more. Give me some more. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, today we're gonna talk about Blow Up, the 1966 classic murder thriller. Yeah, be cool, baby, be cool. Watch us, watch us. Yeah, come on, come on, give me some more, give me some more. Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Joe DiOrio, and this is The Real Watch List Plus with my co-host, Debbie Higgins. Today's film, Blow Up, the 1966 murder thriller. Today we're gonna to talk about not only the film, but its importance to the Flower Power 60s and 60s cinema. Debbie, mm. it's great to have you back again. Oh, thank we're you, Joe. Together. And I think it's Joe, but I can't see. I had to wear my funky glasses because they're so cool and they go dramatically with this outfit. But now I, I gotta put my outfit. boring 2024 oh, glasses on. And yes, we're going to talk about Blow Up. Blow Up is really interesting because it's a film that questions the meaning of life. A classic film by Michelangelo Antonioni. Antonioni. Right? Antonioni. Antonioni. The Italian. Uh, what's it good use for? But what's really fascinating is that it's a film that really shows what life was like in the 1960s oh, yeah. London fashion society. I think we need to rate this film. Okay, our signature little paddles. And are we ready on one, two, two three. three. All right, mm -hmm. well, we're, we're close. Oh, one point off. Is that a picture of me? That's a picture of you. What I liked about this film, it really makes you feel like your 1960s oh, yeah. London fashion society, artsy fartsy uh, atmosphere. Yeah. The plot takes place in London, 1960s, mod fashionista mm. style life of Thomas, who's a very famous photographer, a mod photographer who mm -hmm. takes pictures of fashion models. And he's looking for that perfect picture. He's in a park one day and he's looking around for that perfect shot, notices a couple being kind of flirtatious, kind of risque, but decides to sneak up on them and take some film, take some shots of them. When he does, Jane, who's played by Vanessa Redgrave, she realizes that she and the guy she's with, they're being photographed. She approaches Thomas and says, I want that film. He doesn't want to give it to her. And then we go into the whole scene of his life and the things that happened during that day. And it really questions like, is this fashionista mod life that he's living? Is that really life? Well, Blow Up is a really significant film in cinephile cultures. It has been referred to time and again, and it's a film that has been studied, and later on I'll talk about even remade. And uh, it's a juxtaposition between life as a reality and what it, we perceive. And that's the same way with photography, yeah. because they're looking at being a photographer as a voyeur. And as a voyeur, do you get in trouble by being a voyeur? Can you look from a distance and not get engaged? Or like David Hemmings did, because of what you did, you get engaged and you br you're brought into a world of mystery that you just can't figure out mm -hmm. what's real and what's fake. Right. But Thomas, who's played by David Hemmings, right. likes his life. You know, he, he likes to be able to boss people around and play around with women and take photos and be popular. Mm -hmm. But as the film progresses, we find that Mm, maybe that voyeuristic approach is not really what life is really about. There's maybe more. And in the beginning scene, he's actually looking at a painting with a lot of specks, a lot of dots. Pointillism. Yes, uh, there, there's an, an, uh, an artist, an uh, impressionistic artist that used to do that. I can't remember. His is name. it Marc Chagall? Or no, was it Surratt? Was it Surratt? But he looks at that painting and he he's kind of intrigued about that style of painting and. You know, the filmmaker is trying to give us an idea that, hmm, is this what life is all about? Are we just a dot on a, on a right. big canvas? Or is there something more? But an, another thing, Joe, is... Uh, George Surratt. Surratt. It was Surratt. Surratt. It is Surratt. Okay. Oh, right. I got, got it right. right. She got it right. right. She got it right. That was right. That was right. That was right. Vanessa Redgrave, who's Jane, uh, finds out where 
Thomas lives. And he's like, how the heck does she know? Yeah, where how I the live? hell did she find out where he lived? Right, and she's she wants that film in the hardest way. She wants to get that film, and we don't know why. Thomas fools her in giving her another roll of film. Mm -hmm. She leaves. I mean, she goes as far as trying to take off her clothes to model for him and have a little something with him to get that film. This was the first British film that had nudity. Yes. And it was a whole wave of time period that we went through in the film business. I don't say we, but you know what I mean. Where nudity was in the 19, late 60s and 70s, there was tons of nudity in films. And it was like part of the plot, but it was, the, the rating system was all changing. Everything was getting messed up, but it was the first. And the Brits were the first ones to do it, not the Americans. Well, you know how MGM got around it? They created another company, correct? Another film company, to be the lead in distributing this film. So it bypassed the American um, censor, codes, censor, censor, yeah. censor codes. So when people saw the film, there was always a question: Were they seeing the film because of its cinematic artistry, yeah. or were they seeing it because they were showing nudity? Thomas takes that film. He's like, mm, "This woman wants it in the biggest way, so let me take the film." And he starts to blow it up. Obviously, that's where they get the title from, blow up. And as he's blowing up the film, he realizes he's seeing an image. He can't quite tell, he's not mm -hmm. sure, but it looks like a gun. It looks like a gun pointing to this unknown man that Jane was being flirty with. So now we're changing the whole thing. He's thinking, oh my God, I discovered a possible murder. Like, yeah, I and who is this them. guy? Is he right. a politician? Is he, you know, a famous star? Who is this person? And he's calling his friends. Say, I, I stopped the murder. He thinks that he, by taking that film and distracting Jane, that he saved a life. Right. To find out later, that wasn't the case. The unidentified man was actually murdered. And after discovering that he was murdered comes back to his place and his place is ransacked. Mm -hmm. All those blow up photos were torn, taken, everything was taken away. So now he goes through this transformation like, oh my God, I went to the park, I saw this guy de dead. Death has an impact on right. my reason for being. David Hemmings is of course the lead and he start, he became known to the public later on when he was in Camelot, mm -hmm. the musical with Richard Harris. He was Mordred, his horrible son that actually destroyed the round table. He actually had some serious film and theater background. He did, Before this he movie. did, but he, that was his first film, I right. believe. Yes, and right. they said he was all sweaty That's and he correct. was all nervous. Yeah. He was all crazy because he felt like, you know, was he, it, it, and Antonioni kind of like let them go with the plot. Originally, they wanted to cast Sean Connery in the Connery, lead, yes. but Connery read the script and he said, I don't even understand this movie. So he didn't want to be in it. Uh, Sarah Miles is his girlfriend in it and he's cheating and it's a typical 60s swinging thing. She was a pretty famous star, Vanessa Redgrave. I think it was her first film. And um, uh, it was produced by Carlo Ponti, who, if I'm not wrong, because I really didn't look this up. I will correct you if you're was wrong. Was it Sophia Loren's yes. husband? Yes. Okay. And he was married. And um, Michelangelo Antonioni also did a famous film called Zabriskie Point, which was representative of French New Wave cinema. And what was interesting, too, with Antonioni's film Blow Up, this was his first English-speaking film. Another thing, the crew, they have a scene in a nightclub. The band, they wanted Lou Reed in the Velvet Underground, mm -hmm. but Lou Reed didn't want to do it. But and guess it was also who they had? to bring him over, too. That was the other part, that it was costly to bring him over. Absolutely to... correct. I get another one. Ta-da! But it was the Yardbirds. Mm -hmm. Now, this is really good to my heart because it was Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page became my favorite band in the whole wide world, Led Zeppelin. Yes. So that was really, really interesting that mm -hmm. I had to put the Yardbirds in there because I was looking for that all through it. And there they were. Right, but Antonioni, oh, Antonioni. 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 <laughs> Why am I having a problem with an Italian name? I don't, I don't know. know. Because it was set in London and that was swinging. Mm -hmm. I was so into that back then. I had paper dresses. I had Carnaby Street. I had Surfer Blue lipstick. I had Wait this a stuff. You had I, Surfer Blue lipstick. I had Surfer Blue. Li it was the big color. <laughs> Yardley of London was okay. the biggest makeup company back okay. then. And in the in the studio, 
the first model that he takes pictures of mm -hmm. is Barushka. Yes. And she is very, was very famous. She had a nine foot spread of her legs. Her legs went on forever, right up to her neck. See what they were wearing? It was kind of interesting because yeah, well, you, you mentioned Barushka. She wore this outfit, I mean, literally, the side was just open from... Well, it was the nudity thing, but Mary Quant was the big designer. This is kind of like a Mary Quant design. Oh, excuse me. And this was part of the thing to tie something around the head. I put it on as a belt to start, and I went, eh, doesn't look good. So I said, I'll put it on my head. Well, why are you a part? See, now, you, this is what I can't right. understand about you. Why? What do you, you have such a depth of knowledge, and you share it, and you love it, you love it, and then you give it a low score like a seven. Like, why? Well, because if you don't study film mm -hmm. and you're not a cinephile and you didn't have, you know, the time where you lived through this period, which I did, believe it or not. I didn't. I was born you know, in 1966. Baby, you were an embryo. I was born in You were this big. You were a thought. You were an atom. Well, it when uh, this movie came out, mm -hmm. everybody saw it and it was like, I guess everybody was like doing LSD. I don't know what they were doing, but... Because it was new wave cinema and they, the Italian directors and the influence of Europe was coming in, everybody thought like the miasma, like Barbie, how they all are Barbie now. So Blow Up was a picture that really was studied. And wow. people really started studying film in schools in the 1960s. Interesting, because when I saw it for the first time doing this review, I was waiting for an ending. I was waiting for the filmmaker to tell me no. who murdered this person. And it ended on like, uh, what just happened here? The last scene was with the mimes again. Right. The mimes come back. And they come in they're and tennis. they're playing a fake tennis because of course mimes don't use real things. Right. And yet he's out separated from them and it's quiet, but then the, you hear the tennis ball back and forth and back and forth. At the very end. Yeah. And at that point, you know that Thomas is now almost pulled into that part of life where there is no meaning to Correct. life. It's meaningless. Correct. And the shot pans out like mm -hmm. Michelangelo loves to do. And then... I'm glad you just Michelangelo and we didn't have to go through I didn't want to try. And I know. Only, <laughs> they know me. The shot pans out. <laughs> Thomas is becoming smaller and smaller like that speck. Yeah. in his photography and he disappears right and you're left with oh and that's the whole thing the more you blow something up sometimes mm -hmm. like you were talking about um the pointillism like the picture the mm -hmm. Surat picture the more you blow it up or you get closer it looks different right so it's the back and forth now did you find the part where he's blowing up the photos now he sees the gun or what he believes is the gun but then later when he comes back to those photos when he's having the threesome with the right. two groupies. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get a lot of nudity, folks. Oh, yes, yes. Put that one on your notes. Wait a minute. Something is there that I didn't see before. Let me keep blowing it up. Let me look deeper and deeper. Right. And he has this kind of an image of someone that potentially is dead. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. I mean, he's looking at it. And it's I so it fuzzy. Sort of it was so fuzzy. I even the... walked up and looked at the screen closer like this. Because, right. you know. You were one of like, Wait, what is he looking at? What? The, oh, wait, is it something? Is something there? Right. Again, yeah. that whole question of life. Is there something yeah. really there? Is it real? Mm -hmm. And then he goes back to the right. park. And he well, finds you, a dead you know, man's... You know when you see sleep. something before and then you look at it years later, you see different stuff? The thing about it, the question me, and I don't know if you felt this, mm -hmm. how did Vanessa Redgrave find his place? And well, earlier there was someone that unless he she, saw across the street. You remember he was in the pub with his friend, and then there's a gentleman that's yes. like, kind of like watch him, and then he gets right, in the right, right, right. It's yeah. like, was she connected to the mob or something? Some kind of like, was he watching him to see where he was going? Yeah, where he was, lived, and he then gave that to Vanessa. But that's the whole point of this film. It makes you question. And I'll tell you, my score was less when I saw the movie because I didn't get. It. And as we go into that deep dive, yeah, you get that's more. when that score went up. You might want to change. Well, no, no, I like it the way it is. Ugh. It was actually a five, because I'm like, I don't get this. I don't get this. I think to the typical viewer that wants to watch it, I would highly suggest seeing this movie. Find a streaming service yeah, that's it's offering more than it. Yeah, if you're a cinephile, you got to see it because it's it's visceral to film. But it's it really a general audience, audience major film. No 
walking in there that it's going to make you think, but it's also going to make you feel that 1960s London. I mean, that's what I loved. I love that fashion. It's the Me Beatles, it's the Rolling Stones. Oh my God, it was the best time ever. The thing that I didn't get to is, of course, things were more primitive in the 60s where there wasn't the population everywhere. Mm -hmm. There were places that you could look at where it looked more pastoral. But this guy's body was in the park from the afternoon until the middle of the night. How did no one see a dead body laying in a park? Well, you, you gotta did look that look you? Yeah, I know it did. Because again, I'm watching it for the first time and I'm thinking, come on, that thing's still there? I mean, and then all of a sudden it's disappeared. That it's thing. disappeared, but His body. again, it's not, I really, I really appreciated it more after learning more because that's the whole point of it. Exactly. There's no you get it. I get it. You I got get it. it. My film partner, you get it. You get it. Oh my God, the praise. So, so educated. You get it. Now look at you. You're like a film. I'm what? I'm a film noir. You're a film person. Fashionista. No noir. That's not war. Oh, that's Different show. Blowout. Remake, John Travolta, 1981. Not a photographer, he's a sound guy for movie business. Interesting. Breathless, two versions, mind you. The first one was Jean-Paul Belmondo, which is the seminal version. In 1960, remade with Richard Gere. And what I did here, but don't tell anybody, is that Richard Gere, because he had come off of American Gigolo and he was all that and then some, he slept with every leading lady until he found the right person that had the chemistry. Okay. And I want to believe it, just like maybe the gerbil thing, oh, what we said. Huh? And the other one is <laughs> Eight and a Half, great film. Yes. Marcello Mastriani. And the Italian cinema is great stuff to watch. So I'm going to link you people into the Italian cinema. Yes. Dad, nice. you're stressing me. What? And that's time for a sponsor, oh. Brady's Metallicals, okay. to help me to relieve my stress. Maybe I should take it. It's legal and it's clean. So go to Brady's Botanicals where you can get your gummies, your CBD oils, and even for your pet, you could give them a little something, something. <laughs> to ease their stress, their anxieties, and just be cool, just like the 60s. So look for Brady's Botanicals at the location on the screen and check them out. Blow up. It's something that if you're a cinephile, definitely watch. If you're just a regular schmo and you wanna live that 1960s coolness of London, watch it. Go in there with an open mind, Debbie. Well, here's the thing too. I don't have my glasses on again, but I, we did stream it on. What channel did we stream it on? Was it on Tubi? I threw my notes down. Oh, I have it now. and I have to look now. Hold on. It's on Tubi. We saw it on Tubi. And Tubi's pretty good because they keep things for a long time. Actually, it's a great channel. And you can see a lot of old cinema on Tubi. A lot of old cinema that Debbie was seeing back when she was a little bit. Yeah, I know. I was going at white. nine years old. Well, silent it. movies too, Debbie saw as a child. Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw everything. Don't show your <laughs> Don't show Wait. the Show this? He did. He did. He showed. You know what? If I can't show my, speed, but he shows. But this. if blow up can show. I don't want to show my. I don't want to show. I mean, shall I say what it was? Go ahead. I don't care. They were showing the woodle. The woo woo. The woo woo. Well, we have a name for it. It's a nice, kind, soft name. Wait, will YouTube find me if I say woo woo? No, woo woo is not a word. I made it up. Okay. One of my made up words. Can we show? Like, come on, please. But that's how, I'm sorry, that's how David Hemmings as Thomas was dressed in the movie. So He's I'm trying to get that, that, people that. to watch us by going half naked. Thank you. You got it. You got it. Engage. Tell me if this is working or not.